Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Premilaka and I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, we are going to discuss about the 12 areas in piping design in which every piping design engineer should have a strong knowledge to become a technically sound in piping design. So without wasting your time, let's get into the topic. The first topic that I am going to talk about is PNID because most of us believe that PNID is just an input. We just need to have an ability to read the PNID. No, it's not true. Being a piping design engineer, the moment you read the PNID, you must be able to understand the process from the PNID. You must be able to understand the requirements of valves in the PNID. You must be able to understand why the system has been brought. There will be a blowdown system, there will be bypass, there will be drain system, there will be vent systems. So you should see the process as your whole system. For that, you should need to understand the PNID. To understand the PNID, basically you need to know about the symbol. But over a period of time, you should gain uh, knowledge of process. Knowledge of process in the sense, how this uh, fluid flow works, how many equipments are connected, from where the flow starts and where it goes. Basically, you should be well conversed with the PNID in order to understand the process so that you can develop a good piping design. Otherwise, you'll be making a lot of mistakes and to correct your mistakes, it may take long time, maybe at the end of the stage or you may waste a lot of time in correcting your mistakes. But if you understand the process, understand the requirement of the process so that you'll be able to develop a good piping design. So now let's go to the second area that I'm going to talk about is the piping spec or PMS we can call for actually. So what is PMS? It's piping material specification. It's one of the very important documents where the pipe fittings are listed, pipes are listed with item codes, uh, sizes with the branch tables and certain conditions for welding and hydro testing requirements, PT rating. There are many informations which are in the piping spec. I have already made one particular video about the PMS actually so you can go and check that this document so that it will help you to understand what this uh, particular document is consist of actually. So basically the intent is you should have a sound knowledge about the PMS. See for the beginners it's fine uh, for the beginners you they just have to know how to use this document but for experience to become technically strong you should know the element of PMS. You should know why these requirements all are listed over here actually. So how, uh, I mean what is the basic uh, necessity for this requirement. So basically you should have a strong knowledge about the PMS. Then um, the third area that I am going to talk about is the valves and trims. Many of us know the types of valves. They call for, I mean they would list gate valve, butterfly valve, ball wall and all actually. But very few knows about the trims which are used in the valves actually. So we should know about the details of the trims because the trims varies with respect to the material of the bag. So basically trims are known to be the wetter parts that you can, once you read about the trims you will be able to know about it actually. So please note this down, valves and trims are one of the important area. Most of us concentrate only on the type of the girls but it's really really important to know about the trims in piping design because trim selection is one of the very uh, critical selection which um, uh, I mean which uh, which is one of the uh, factor for the integrity of the piping that I would say actually. So now let's go to the, the fourth one. The fourth one is common piping material. I mean the fourth area is common piping materials used in piping design. So what are the common piping materials? I can list the, the common uh, piping uh, materials such as carbon steel, stainless steel and alloy steel. But these are not the only materials used in piping. So being a piping design, if you are a beginner, that's fine actually. But being an experienced, being technically strong, to become technically strong actually, you should know what are the different types of piping materials used in piping design. There are CPBC, there are RTRP, there are FRP, there are GRP. There are a lot of different types of pipings are used. I mean piping materials are used. So you should know why these piping materials are used and what is the application of these uh, materials and what all design requirements you have to focus on when using these materials actually because the design changes uh, with respect to the material. 
not uh, I mean not 90 percentage maybe 20 25 percentage it varies the minor modification that you have to incorporate whenever you change the material basically so these are the areas that you have to focus on so I think we are done with the fourth area and the fifth area is international standard many of us know ASME B31.3 as a document but only very few goes through the page by page in uh, ASME B31.3 See, let me tell you, ASME B31.3 is a collection of information from uh, the consistent uh, engineering development. It consists lot of engineering solutions with respect to piping design. You have to read page by page in order to understand this B31.3. Do not ignore this document. This is one of the vital documents. If you wanted to become technically strong, you have to read it. There is no other go actually. Now let's go to the uh, sixth area. The sixth area is basically pipe routing and pipe support. When you say yourself as a piping design engineer, the first important qualification you should know is that you must be really, really good in pipe routing and pipe support. I made two posts, one for pipe supports and also for pipe routing. You can uh, take the pipe support supports from, I mean, course from the Udemy platform and pipe routing course from my website penidaka.com and go to course actually. So that you will find there are only one uh, course and I am not going to put more number of courses because I am only going to uh, launch a unique course which will really help candidates to understand the nature, I mean the true nature of job actually, not the theory at all actually. So if you want to understand about this course, uh, you can check the preview video so that um, uh, all details are available in my website. You can go and check it actually. Now let's go to the uh, seventh area. The seventh area that I am going to talk about is you must be able to draw piping layout and isometrics with your freehand sketches. So basically what I am trying to say is that you must be that good in making your piping layout. So basically you should have a strong knowledge in piping layout and isometric development. Then the eighth one is the equipment interface. See equipment interface when I say uh, we have a lot of uh, different types of equipment such as static and rotary. In static you have heat exchangers, pressure vessels, uh, distillation columns and in rotary you have compressors, uh, pump, there are different types of uh, uh, pumps actually. So when we talk about equipment interface, the piping is connected with equipment through nozzles. So you must know the details of what kind of details you need to have in order to complete your piping design. Basically for pumps, you should know about this pump flange rating and nozzle sizing and in equipment the height of the flanges, I mean height of the nozzle. So there are many other information. I, I cannot list everything over here in this video. There are many other requirements. So basically what I am talking about is that when you are making, when you are developing a piping design basically, you should know the information that you need to have from equipment. So equipment is, I mean without equipment you cannot have a process plan, right? So basically you should have those information in handy. So you should have the equipment data sheet. You should know about the elevations of each nozzle, sizes actually. You should fix the orientation. For that you should know about these details, right? So equipment interface is one of the very important thing. Most of us miss, but being a piping design engineer, <coughs> we must have this knowledge about it. Now let's go to the, the ninth one. The ninth one is how to brief your project and how to present your project. See, it's really important to be a good presenter uh, in any field, uh, though in piping design or in any other field, uh, it uh, doesn't vary actually. As long as you are a good uh, uh, presenter, I mean, uh, if you are able to uh, brief your project well actually, so you will be able to convince the client actually. So if you are not in a position to brief you, if you are not in a pos uh, position to represent your uh, project uh, in a right way, so you will get a lot of comments from clients. So that's the intention actually. In order to uh, avoid getting a lot of comments from client, you should be able to present it well. You must have done your design fantastically, there is no doubt about it. But you should be always uh, a good presenter and uh, you should do a good briefing. One is that uh, you will be uh, having a, I mean, a smooth flow in your project, otherwise you will get a lot of comments actually if the clients got irritated. So please remember this, improve the skills actually. Now the tenth one is items considered as hold during uh, detail engineering. See the items considered uh, hold uh, during detail engineering are basically the instrument connections, instrument sizes, control wires, flow instruments, 
the height of the control valve, actuators, and the rate of the actuators. So these are the informations you have to have a list. Otherwise, before I mean in the AFC, you may miss out these things. Actually, before releasing the AFC, you should know the implication of these informations. Otherwise, what happens when the control valve comes? You would not have verified the height of the control valve, but in the field, it may hit with the bypass line actually. So these are the areas that you have to uh, focus. So now let's go to the, the I mean uh, the uh, which one? It's eleventh one, right? Okay. The eleventh one is document review system. Being technically strong in piping design, we must know how the document should be reviewed because the designer makes the first level of drawing and he checks himself. Then it goes to a different level. Then it goes to a different level. Everywhere there must be a checklist and how the comments should be captured and how it has to be uh, approved so these are different i mean different company follows a different uh, uh, system basically but uh, the if you see the review system in the totality uh, these review systems are implemented in order to uh, i mean uh, minimize the comments minimize i mean remove the blunder from the design actually so being a uh, experienced mapping design engineer we must know uh, the I mean we must have a strong knowledge about the document review system so that you will be able to answer during the interview someone asked about this basically. So it's about the review system so please have this knowledge please go through your company procedures quality procedures so that you will get this idea about it. Now let's go to the, <coughs> the 12th area that I am going to talk about is cost implications. So what are cost implications? So basically uh, piping design engineers plays a vital role in terms of saving the cost because uh, let me give you an example if you increase the layout by one meter your cost goes by five percentage actually so if you increase the layout by two meters your cost goes ten percentage that's because it's not only about the piping if you increase the layout uh, size your concrete cost goes, your workmanship goes, your structural cost goes, your piping length goes, your feeding material goes your cable length goes so you can see n number of factors which can uh, actually increase the cost if you don't plan it uh, well in a hurry basically so piping design engineers are the one who are uh, responsible for making this planning the piping layout and how to arrange the equipment how to provide support how to minimize the support and how to provide uh, the several lines in one support so you should have this cost implication experience so that you will be able to develop the good design. So I believe that these are the 12 areas that you should have to work on if you really wanted to become technically strong in piping design. I know this experience it's not easy for you to get it actually but don't uh, lose hope you can get it by uh, time and experience uh, and uh, by reading books there are a lot of good books actually uh, read some good books so that you will be able to understand how the system entire system works basically so always don't uh, lose hope and always don't feel that you are not getting opportunities you will get an opportunity for in order to get an opportunity you have to be prepared in order to be prepared you should, you should have some minimum knowledge for that read books ask your seniors ask your peers colleagues and uh, read the existing drawings try to evaluate uh, the existing drawing design basically so that you will be able to understand the the basic true intent of the design so you will become a good piping design engineer i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandran thank you so much for watching my video see you soon